Liam, I suppose the Irish League has sort of settled at this stage, and uh, at the start of the season, I think it was uh, Crusaders you tipped, and Crusaders certainly are the team that are leading the way. Yeah, so far so good, Adrian. You're quite right, the, the league has settled down somewhat, but then we're coming to this critical period now of what they talk about, the festive season, and there are quite a few games played over Christmas. Some players maybe like to indulge at Christmas and celebrate when they shouldn't be and eat when they shouldn't be. Uh, there's some strange results I always find over the festive period, so I think the top teams, in fact all the teams, will be getting that message across to their players, you know, that there's a lot to, get, to be gained around the Christmas period. Funny enough, you're talking about a team that struggled with the past couple of seasons. Oren Kearney seems to have turned the corner way of a Korean, hasn't he? Absolutely. And, you know, I'm so full of admiration for all they're doing at Korean because they have been disappointing. We talk about teams that punch above their weight. I've always felt that they punch below their weight because potentially they're a very big club, Adrian. The people love their football down around that area and it's been steeped in, in, in success over the 70s. But ever since that period, they've never really recaptured that. Yeah, they've... An odd time they've knocked on the door of success, but not really in any form of continuity. I think they've got a great blend of youth and experience. I think Stephen Douglas and Hard Bevelin have been immense at the centre of their defence. Some really talented youngsters. They've allowed James McLaughlin, who was playing junior football, who I know very well, played in the same junior team for the last few years as my son William. And I always said James had potentially needed to be taken and an arm put round him and and, and disciplined in the right manner. He's got that opportunity now at Coleraine and he's grabbed it with both hands and I commend everybody at Coleraine for doing that because you need somebody to score goals, Adrian. Goals won football matches. They're hard to get prolific goal scorers. James is a prolific goal scorer and I think they've struck gold. You're talking about goals. I was at Dungannon covering it for the BBC. Dungannon against Glenavon. Owen Bradley came in, did very little but then scored the winning goal in something like the 95th minute. You're talking about a team, you talked about Korean sometimes punch below their weight. Could you say that Glenavon are this time punching above their weight? Because they certainly were very, very watchable. And in Bradley, they have someone who can score. No, I don't think they're punching above their weight. I think since the arrival of Gary Hamilton, and there were many question marks, uh, I think they have become a, a team now to be reckoned with. I think they are... They are now showing the form they're capable of. They have a great squad of players, Adrian, and, and a great strike force. They have Kevin Braniff, they have, who on his day is the best footballer in the Irish League, in my opinion. And they've, you're quite right, they've got Owen Bradley, uh, who's a presence. He's a big lad. He's physically strong, and he can score goals. I remember you're just saying about him popping up in the 93rd minute. I remember doing a game one day with Joel Taggart for BBC Radio Ulster, uh, when they were uh, cup holders and they were away at Moyola Park and we were stuck up on a wee platform in the freezing rain, sleet well. and snow, you remember <laughs> it well. And honestly, our gobs were starting to freeze and it was getting very tough to actually speak, which is something uh, strange for him or me. But at the, it looked as if it was going to extra time. There was no way I could have made it. I was on the verge of collapse and so was Joel with hypothermia when... I'll never forget him for it. Owen Bradley popped up in the last minute to score the winner for Glenavon. Otherwise, we were in for a real starving. But no, he's uh, he's somebody who will score you a goal at any time. You don't take your eye off him if you're a defender. I think he's one of the main reasons why Glenavon, I think, will be top four again in the league. And I think they're a good cup bet. You're talking about Glenavon, talking about Bradley. And of course, they had a victory recently against Linfield. David Healy, uh, national hero top scorer, a man revered around the grounds, and then he goes to take the Linfield job. Was he wise? Was he not wise? Or how's it going to work out for the wee man? From my perspective, I thought he was mad. Because David Healy is a legend. He's right up there with the, the Pat Jennings and the Harry Greggs and all of these type of people. He's an absolute legend, an iconic figure in, in Northern Ireland international football. Uh, he's taken on a tough job at Linfield. They haven't had the ideal start. They've just set a record of three successive defeats. First time since 2002, I believe. Uh, Linfield over the years have been spoilt with success and their fans expect them to win every game, Adrian. David has, I looked down at him at the technical area, I've been commentating of two of those three losses. And, and I feel for him because he has come in as well and taken over a team 
you know, that's already the season has started. It's not the ideal team time to take over any team. He has come in, he's inherited Warren Feeney's squad of players. He has inherited Warren Feeney's backroom staff. It's like me putting on your coat. There's mm. a lot of things not just the same about it. Uh, mm. and, and it takes time, you know, you're better with your own backroom staff. He may opt to keep the ones he has, he may opt to change them. He will certainly, I think, opt to bring in a few new faces when he can, but where do you get them? Uh, he may, I think he's maybe looking now maybe to the League of Ireland to see who's available down there. He needs players. The Linfield team I see now, and I don't care who's managing them, I think they're a soft team now. They never used to be soft. I think there's a soft centre in them. I think they're vulnerable defensively. I said that at the outset of the season, if you check back. I still think that exists. And I think they lack a proper leader. I think where you have the Crusaders and the Colin Coates, who's a commanding figure, Adrian, he's a great leader. When people are struggling or players are struggling for form, they always have a tendency to look to their leader. Coatsy, for me, is a great leader at Crusaders. I don't think, with all due respect, that Linfield have that. David will certainly come in He'll make notes of what he needs, who he needs, and he'll set about that task. He has come in at a terribly awkward time, and I sincerely hope he's a lovely, lovely lad, David Healy. I sincerely hope it works out for him. You talk about a difficult time. The last time we were here, Eddie Patterson was in this chair too, as well as the Glen Torn boss. He's now been replaced by Alan Kernahan. So Alan Kernahan comes in as well, a man who has been there, done that, and bought the T-shirt really all over the place. But a difficult time for him too. Absolutely, you're, you've nailed it completely. He comes in with a tremendous CV, uh, has been there and done it and has the T-shirt to prove it. Coming into a Glen Torn team who, let's be honest, have been struggling, Adrian. They've been struggling for consistency. Ironically, they'd had a wee run of form just when Eddie was relieved of his duties. But there are problems there. Uh, and I think it's, uh, it was no great secret that there was no love lost between Eddie and the board at the finish. And it was, uh, I thought it was only a matter of time. It was an uneasy truce since they, they won the last Irish Cup. And I always felt that, and I think anybody that's hands-on in football realised that. Alan has come in. Of all the candidates that were there, I think he was the best choice. I think he's an excellent choice. Uh, he's coming in at a very awkward time, very similar to, to David Healy at Linfield. That team's somebody else's team. There'll be players in it he doesn't like. There'll be players in it don't like him. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've got to build that togetherness at all teams. That takes time. It's like Coleraine. You know, if you look back at the Coleraine, Oren was very, very close to maybe being shown the door. Mm -hmm. uh, they persevered. Perhaps they hadn't the money to pay him off. And it has really uh, stood them in good stead now because Oren Kearney has turned Coleraine into a team that are now looking like a team that could win a major trophy. I think Alan Kearney needs the, the time, like Linfield, need to give David Healy the time. He deserves the time. And he deserves the patience of the fans on the board. And any setbacks, i.e. poor results, etc., etc., have got to be taken in their context that new man, give him time, let him get his own stamp on it. And again, I wish Alan all the best. You talk about people getting time. You talked about, you know, Eddie Patterson gone, Warren Feeney moves to, to new pastures. You know, Darren Murphy has left and young as well, Rodney McAree in there. And it's the usual suspects at the bottom of the table. The Irish League... The Irish League's cutthroat now, Liam. You know, you, you talk about time, but are, are managers getting time now? You, you know, sometimes you worry about that. Well, sometimes you do, <clears> and of course you take Tommy Breslin as well away at Cliftonville, you mm -hmm. know, and then obviously they bring Jerry Little in there, which is a promotion from within, uh, which I like to see because that keeps the continuity going, Adrian. It's not a new face. He knows the players. They know him. They know how each other works. So I think that that change over as is less of an upset than it is normally if you bring in somebody completely brand new. Uh, Cliftonville have been lucky in that. In fact, in fact, that changeover has appeared almost seamless. You know, there hasn't been. You can't see the joint. They've just continued. Mm -hmm. In fact, they've got, they've been a far better side since Jared has come in. That impetus is with them now. They're sitting second in the league, Cliftonville, mm -hmm. right up in there. They had hit a slump under Tommy. Tommy had probably tried all that he could to try and uh, regenerate what he had. He couldn't get that going. Uh, and now Jared Little has come in, new face, and has and it's working, and it's working really well. I agree. Uh, some of the other clubs now are, you know, managers are, you look at Warren Point, uh, that, that, that fella at Warren Point has done his very best. 
is it's been with them for a long number of years he's watched them progress right up into senior level now people are wondering is he about to step down because when you get to the big league the, the, the Irish League Premiership. Difficult for the likes of Barry Gray, you know, who's put yeah. his life and soul into that. You of know course. What I mean? And Darren, I, I, you know, Murph as well put his heart and soul into that again. And you talk about internal, Rodney McIntyre takes over there. Yeah. But those clubs at that lower level, they just don't have the resources or the finance Absolutely. to cope against the likes of Linfield, Gentorn, Cliftonville, yeah. you know, Crusaders. Absolutely, you're quite right. Those clubs, like the Warren Points, like the Dungan and Swifts, I had the same problem, Adrian, when I was manager of Institute. Mm -hmm. Small fan base, good people around the club keep everything tidy, keep the facilities well updated, and they're a credit. But at the end of the day, it takes money to run an Irish League football club. And it takes money if you want to get a good centre forward or a good centre half or a good midfield player or a good goalie. That all takes money, Adrian. And money talks. And if you haven't got it, then you don't talk. And, and, and I feel, I can feel certainly, from a personal point of view, I can feel how Barry Gray feels because and Darren Murphy before he left on Gannon Swift, because they're pinning up team sheets many as a Saturday. I used to do it, Adrian, in the knowledge that that team they're putting up is not good enough to beat the team they're going to play. But, of course, they can't tell the players that. They've got mm -hmm. to fill the players full of as much confidence as they possibly can. But deep down, hand on heart, they know they're in for a hard time. And I feel for them because it's really tough. I've been there. As we head for Christmas then, Liam, you know, Santa Claus just around the corner. Crusaders, you think, are going to be cock-a-hoop over the festive period? I think so. I think they have the best squad. Uh, I don't see any reason to change that. Do you know this, Adrian? All successful teams, if you analyse them and you look for weaknesses, when the Linfield had the great teams, when the Cliftonville had the great teams, I used to look at those teams individually and I couldn't find a weakness. Now you look at Crusaders, I can't find a weakness. I go through every position in their team, I can't find a weakness. Then you cast your eye to the bench and you see a bench of, of substitutes sitting mm. that could walk into any Irish League club, i.e. particularly the ones we've just been aforementioned. So I look at that there and I reckon it's tough. For me, Crusaders are the team to beat in anything they are in.